it's not a walkthrough, playthrough, review, anything like that. It's just me playing the game badly, so you can see what it looks like. Okay then, this is Gran Turismo 4, the big one, really. I, I, I don't know how it compares size-wise to Gran Turismo 6, but it's big. And the first thing you notice about it is this screen. The, the layout, the way it's organised, is big. And in all honesty, it's a confusing mess. There's lots and lots and lots of stuff on it, scattered all over the place. And unless you're really familiar with it, and I was once upon a time, but now I'm just bloody confused. You know, it, it, what? It's not organised, it's not clever. I was going to say it's not big, it's not clever, but it is big, and that's the problem. It's. Uh, it aggravates me. Uh, let's go home. 33% well 33.7% complete which shows I didn't really get very far mainly because wife <laughs> I, I met the woman who is now my wife and I spent more time with her than I spent playing this um, nevertheless I, I've got what um, it's not really what I wanted to do I wanted to scroll down through them but yeah here we are and you yeah, I've got more. I've got cars. Lots of cars. But not as many as on three, I don't think. I'm not sure. Whatever. Let's um, let's pick a car. Is there any of these? Are they good? Can't remember. Now, where on um, Gran Turismo concept I was able to configure my controller so that my right stick was accelerate and brake I can't do that here I'm having to use the buttons and that oh it's doing it anyway okay fine it wouldn't let me configure it myself but it's oh Jesus hey look this is familiar This is a fun car to drive. It's rear wheel drive, I don't know what the engine is out of. It's something not entirely powerful, though I think, if memory serves, I tweaked it somewhat and... Oh dear. So there I was yesterday, learned this circuit, but today I've forgotten it already. You should expect these kind of, oh God. These kind of things. I'm trying to decide the quality of the graphics. How do they compare with 3 and concept? Is there really any difference? I am unsure. At the time I remember thinking it was a, a, a slight improvement over 3. Now? Don't really know. Looks lovely, whatever the case. Whether, whether it's an improvement or not, it's nice. I'm making a pig's ear of this. Pig's ear or a dog's dinner. Or maybe the dog is eating pig's ear for dinner. Who knows? Certainly our dogs like pig's ears. We used to feed them to them. And then we gave them pig snouts. And uh, Dogs will I'll say they'll eat anything, but it's not true. Pigs will eat anything. But we haven't got pigs. We have dogs. Max likes fruit, Bailey doesn't, but he feels embarrassed if he sits there and asks for fruit and you give him some and then he finds out he doesn't like it and he'll go and walk into the other room before spitting it out because he doesn't want you to see he spat it out because he asked for it. He kind of has interesting manners where food is concerned. Uh, I'm not concentrating on my driving. Thinking too much about dogs eating pigs and fruit. Because obviously that is relevant to this game. I don't 
the brakes on this car are especially impressive. Come on, go faster. Surprise sudden installation of turbos and nitrous oxide would be handy right now. But it ain't gonna happen. Mm. Of course there it said A spec. You have B spec on here, don't you? Which is like where the computer drives it for you. Which apparently is the way to accomplish your 24 hour there's, there's a couple of 24 hour or at least one 24 hour endurance race you, you start it off driving it yourself then you put it on b-spec where it drives itself and then you switch back at the end but yeah I was never keen on that but you have to do it to complete it but I, I, obviously I haven't got nearly as far through this as any other Gran Turismo I'm further through six than I am through this um, I feel like I need to come back and complete this because I've missed a lot. So this is just a free run round the Nürburgring Nordschleife in this weird... Where's the... Where... Oh, I can't change the view. Oh well. Some weird Nike concept car thing that doesn't exist and is ridiculous but I'm in it so... I guess it was the Gran Turismo 4 equivalent of that Red Bull thing. Except the Red Bull thing is at least plausible, where this is fairly ridiculous. But, whatever. Can't work out how to change the view, so you can... There. What, what, oh dear. That thing. I mean, that's, that, that's just silly. And I've got some glitching going on up there in the top left corner. Get yeah, back on the track, you fool. So how does the Nordschleife look on Gran Turismo 4 compared to 5 and 6? Actually, 6 does look better than 5. They, they sort of sorted out the trees a bit and the lighting. On here, I don't know, pretty good actually. There's not a lot in it. How many gears has this thing got? Quite a lot. But, oh, that was interesting. There was a, a nice sudden blur effect as I hit the barrier briefly. It's kind of like, like you make yourself dizzy or something. That was quite impressive. It does handle well. I mean, I suppose you'd expect it to. Because it's a ridiculous car that doesn't exist. Would have been more suited to um, concept than GT4, really. But I guess I mean they're kind of going that way in that they they seem to like their fantasy cars a bit. I suppose they always have to a degree. They've always had at least one concept car. Um, but I do feel some of them are a bit ridiculous and whoops and impossible, and I I don't. I don't approve, but I'll still use them, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I guess I, I, I'm, I don't feel above cheating if I can't win a certain race or series or whatnot in a proper car, I'll use a, fa oops, I'll use a fantasy car to do it, no problem. I was asked, and to my shame I can't remember who asked me, what do I think of the license? system on Gran Turismo because every Gran Turismo has a license thing where you've got to pass the tests to earn the licenses before you can progress through the game. Um, now it has changed somewhat how, th th how difficult it is and where they sort of fit it in to the game mechanics. Um, in the on Gran Turismo 1 through to 4, 
and I'm not sure possibly five as well. You could, if you chose to, take all of the license tests at the beginning, which is what I used to do. I never used to play the game, the actual races, until I'd won all of the licenses, and then I'd just work my way through the rest of the game. On six, you can't do that. You kind of get your licenses as you go through the game. Um, though, the licenses are a lot easier to obtain in six, I have found. But I know not everyone finds that to be the case. I've seen quite a few comments with people chatting amongst themselves saying, oh, as soon as they got to the international licenses, they were stuck. And there is that. You've paid your money you want to play the thing and they stick this barrier in the way and it's like they say to you you're not good enough to play this part of the game so we're not going to let you and that is pissy because not everyone is brilliant or even particularly good at driving games I'm, I mean I'm sh crap at lots of different types of games <laughs> though I can get adequate at most but you know some I just I, um, uh, I just give up if I find it so difficult it's not fun I, I will give up I have been fortunate in being able to pass all of the tests on all episodes of Gran Turismo but I understand the people who feel really ripped off having spent 30 or 40 quid to buy this game and then they can't pass the license test things so they don't get to play the whole game yeah that's 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 crappy. Um, from my own perspective, being able to pass them, how do I feel about them? While I'm doing them, and some of them, especially on Gran Turismo 1, they were really bloody hard, and I spent ages passing the later tests. Some of them, I, you know, I had to do it over and over and over. When it was like a whole circuit, you had to do a lap within a time. I would do it countless times before I could pass. Um, but having done all of that, it's like when you've paid a lot of money to buy a game compared to when you just download a ROM. You want to get your money's worth. And it's the same with the tests, I have found. If I have spent hours and hours and hours trying to pass that test, I'm bloody well going to play that game and get the most out of it. Because by God, I've earned it. Um, I don't know if that's what they were aiming for. It does have that effect on me. If I put in the time and effort, and it worked all the way up to the current one, six. I've passed all the tests but I can't progress through the game anymore on 6. I, I, I can't come anywhere it's like, but last on the, the, the races I'm doing. So I'm, it's like they've changed it and I don't like it. The balance is wrong. But yeah, it is a very, uh, it's quite a contentious thing. And I understand why some people really don't like it. I don't like it when I'm doing it, but I do feel that when I've passed the test, I get my money's worth it makes me play it it's it, it's clever but I think sometimes it's wrong uh, I guess maybe it's just like I'm used to it I accept it you know I, I know it's there I've come to expect it <coughs> and once you have passed the test it's like yay let's get stuck in and, and you don't worry about it so much but yeah if, if you're if you've had difficulty and find yourself stuck, well, it's a game breaker, isn't it? And I do understand the people who feel that way about it. That's my Friday talky topic out the window then, because that's what I was going to talk about then, but it seems more appropriate to talk about here. Really? While we're playing? I do love this circuit. I was thrilled to bits when I found that included it on Gran Turismo 4. I would say it looks a bit not well no it does it looks nicer on 6 uh, and you get the changing weather and the changing lighting and all sorts of stuff like that um, but it's still pretty damn good on here don't know about this car it's kind of ridiculous 
I never go through that bit flat. I'm, I'm so used to losing it there that I always slow down in the end. It's a ridiculous vehicle. With a ridiculous driver. What time? Oh, not even a good time. Eight minutes. 39. Yeah, that's sad. Oh, there goes Geiger Punk's internet connection again. Okay then, having tuned the crap out of my Triumph Spitfire, this is, what is it, El Capitan or whatever, this is one, why on earth did they take this out of Gran Turismo's fi oh, five and, oh dear, five and six, it's a fantastic, get off, it's a fantastic circuit, it's gorgeous, and they removed it, ridiculous, I don't know what they were thinking of, Oh, and I'm just too busy looking at the scenery that I forgot to look where I was going. But whatever, it's lovely. This is one of those circuits that... Uh, it really set Gran Turismo 4 apart from Gran Turismo 3. It, there are aspects of this game that I am unsure about. I do find that whole user interface, front end thing, menu, confusing as hell and cluttered and, and too big and scattered all over the place and just annoying and a mess. Whoops. And that sets it back from three but it could just be you know they've got so much to cram in that they had to do that I don't know I think they could have organized it better but anyway when you get oh dear when you get to the actual racing to the circuits to the cars oh boy it's good it really is when you got stuff like this you can forget all the annoying little details and just wallow in the gorgeousness of it. You have control as well of visual aspects that you didn't previously have, like um, well, image brightness and contrast. I've, t I've turned the contrast down a bit on here. I had it set at plus three, I think, previously, and I found uh, it made it shady areas, it was just hard to see what was going on. Where here, I've turned it down to contrast, like neutral, in the middle, and um, I don't know. It's sort of, oh god almighty, something about that bit, it looks like there's a straight road ahead of you. Um, Yes, while it sort of looks a little bit flat, and even dull, dare I say, um, you can see what's happening in shady areas. It's, uh, it's just easier to see what's going on, except that corner back there where I just, ugh, my brain don't work. This is a tricky circuit, it's got to be said. It's not so hard when you're familiar with it, but this is the first time I've played it in... Oh, six or seven years, I would say. So, out of practice, you could say that, yes. But, I love it. I've missed this track. And there are other tracks on here as well that I must go to, because they are also great and they aren't on other Gran Turismo's which is I, I don't understand some of the choices they made the tracks to remove no sense no sense at all I don't know what they were thinking of Oops. playing well never heard of it let's have a look at the car look at that I had a, I had a friend 
many years ago. In fact, I had a couple of friends whose parents had Triumph Spitfires. Uh, the lad across the road, his mum had one in this colour. And I thought it was great. Um, I always thought, I want one of them. I'm sure they're not even a good car. But I don't care. They, they're, they're just such a classic British car. Um, their performance is an irrelevance to me. It's just what they look like and what they represent. British sports car that appeals to a 14 year old boy, such as I was back then. Let's pick another car and go somewhere else. I had forgotten these. There's a shit ton of circuits that I had completely forgotten about that are utterly gorgeous and fantastic and brilliant. How did I forget these? I've forgotten what this one's called already and I don't care. It's great. Someone will say what it is somewhere. This might be in GT5, possibly. Um, yeah, I'm going to do a lap of each of these. Prob probably going to do them all in this car. I'm in a whoops. I'm in a Renault 5. So you know, nothing too fancy. Uh, I kind of like cars of this type like a normal road car but tweaked that's my favorite kind of car to drive on Gran Turismo because well I can handle them <laughs> really they're, they're easier when you get onto the Formula One style stuff and even the the like Le Mans style cars I just find it too much like hard work this yeah I can do this It's pretty. It's very, very pretty. I just... I... I don't know why stuff like this is missing. Why on earth would they get rid of this? I kind of think 6. Gran Turismo 6 should have been Gran Turismo 4. Tidied up, sorted out. Graphics moved into like the HD era. Um, well, maybe they'll do that with seven. Add four and six together and get seven. That would be awesome. And I mean, it shouldn't take them forever to develop that. The PS4 is meant to be like super easy to develop for, surely. I mean, it's just a PC for God's sake. Give us what we want. Everything. I'm not greedy. much. Have I, I might, have I, uh, I think I've done a whole lap now, haven't I? I ain't sure. That's probably a, oh, it's, it's stuff. Yeah, I think I started somewhere around here, didn't I? Let's move on to the next one. So that was Costa del something or other, and this is something else that I've forgotten. I know this is on, I, sure, this is surely on fire, I think. Whatever, don't care, love it. It's bloody brilliant, and that it's not on six is ridiculous. Unless it is and I've forgotten, which is entirely possible. But, uh, stuff. This reminds me of, well, not actually a place in Milton Keynes, but there's a place not far from Milton Keynes that it sort of reminded me of a little bit. Oh, I'm lost. I was gonna turn left there. Wouldn't have been the right way, I don't think. Oh, that's just so bloody gorgeous. Ooh. Something about these kind of circuits, city circuits, whether or not they actually exist as a race circuit or not, I don't care. Um, but you know, they're based on real-ish places. Compared to 
the race track ones, real race tracks, hate them. Not f for the most part. I mean, apart from Monaco, but then that's in the city anyway. I'm not interested in the ones on a real race circuit, except for the Nordschleife. I just don't care. Race circuits are boring. They're not pretty. They're just built to race cars on. I want something to look at while I'm racing. And that's what you get here. I mean, the worst one of the bunch on Gran Turismo 6 is um, Silverstone. That is shit. It's ugly. It's so... Oh, dear. It's so flat. You, uh, and the way it's laid out on an airfield you can't even tell where you're meant to be driving half the time uh, that's stupid and I don't like it and I don't want to race on it I want stuff like this the, you don't have too much doubt where you're meant to be going here because if you get it wrong you pile into a wall here we go Paris something Oh, gorgeous I don't know where I'm going, it's a long while since I've driven this one, so I can't remember. But it looks utterly, utterly gorgeous. Where am I going? That way. Looks kind of slightly wet as well, or, or like polished cobblestones. Looks slippery. But who cares, the lighting on this is fantastic. Couple the lighting with the with the glossy nature of the cobblestones, and it's brilliant. Oops, oops. I just want to stop by a cafe and, and listen to jazz music and maybe smoke a cigar while drinking coffee. That would be good. Yep. And then maybe stick someone's head in the guillotine. Yeah, it's bloody... Ooh. Words fail me on how good this is. Um, I mean, clearly I am more familiar with Gran Turismo 3. I played it for ages, I knew it inside out. This, I barely have ever even scratched the surface because relationships and stuff. You know, I bought it, I played it a little bit and then uh, I got occupied with other more important things. And I never came back to it. And by God, I have missed so much. Let's move on to another circuit. Here we are in New York. I struggle with this one. I, it's another one where I ain't got a clue where I'm meant to be going. Um, but it's, oh dear, it's good. It's hard. This is one of the harder ones. It's also one of the ones where I struggled with it when I had it set at high contrast. It was like they were simulating high dynamic range and I don't necessarily think that was it. I think I just had it set wrong. The contrast. Um, but whatever, I'm not good on this circuit. I'm not a fan of it, but I wanted to show it because it is very technically impressive. Uh, when you know what you're doing. Let's just whiz along in third and blow the engine up. Yeah, it's... It's visually very, very, very good. Just damned hard to drive. I think that's one of those bits. When I got it all set to high contrast, I couldn't see what was coming and would regularly run into things. Where are we turning? There's where we're turning. I'm not even getting close to showing you all the circuits that are on here. There are... I mean, never mind all the original circuits and all the real race circuits. I'm just like going for a whiz through the city circuits now, just because I feel like it. Um, there are so many more circuits on here than any other Gran Turismo. 
and that makes it special and then with all those cars I don't know I, I, I feel like there might be more in I don't, I don't know if there are more in 6 or not in all honesty I feel like there are but I think I might be wrong as well so don't listen to me just look at the screen and go ooh that's pretty and then go what a twat he just ran into the barrier he doesn't know what he's doing there we're back look at that it's like a big hamster ball. Let's go to another track. Textures are kind of low res in places on here as well on, on this circuit. Mm. Hong Kong, it kicks my butt. Possibly even more than New York. Because um, quite often when you're racing this circuit, you're up against fast cars, you know, proper fast stuff. And you're in one that's proper fast, but if you don't know where you're going, it's easy to make a twat of yourself, especially just here. That's generally where I lose it, but there are plenty of other places where I also lose it. I'm just not very really good at it. Something about it. I I struggle to see. Oh. I can't memorise it. I can't see what's coming. Something about it. I'm just. Oh. Yeah, pants. But it is still visually quite impressive. Oh, that bit's devious as well. And who was it? Someone commented recently that it was their favourite. My apologies, I don't remember who you were, but I know someone did. I always remember what people say, I just don't always remember who said it. Here we go, down here and then there's a... Ooh. This bit's tricky. You get that wrong and you just screw it. This street's quite impressive. I, I like all the signs sticking out. Oh, and I was so busy looking at the signs, I forgot to look at the road. Pentax, Kenwood, stuff. Yeah, it's cool. I don't know if Hong Kong actually looks like this, but... I think it's great. <laughs> okay, Seoul in Korea. This is another, well, it's another track in a city with tall buildings and an idiot who doesn't know where he's going. But I like this one, or I did when I knew where to go, which I don't anymore. Um, it is another one where when I had the contrast set high, I would find dark shady areas where I couldn't really see what was happening. I think. I might be wrong about that, it might have just been the New York one. There, there were certain places where it pays to not have the contrast turned up too high. Where am I going? It's quite scary doing this track when you've got a super, super speedy car. Uh, Yeah, because you can't see things necessarily until you've almost hit them and then you hit the brakes too late and then you hit them, <laughs> if you're me. It's like there's something coming up here but I don't know what. But, where? We're up there. Yeah. All, all the stuff, there's so much stuff to look at that sometimes you can't see where the road is going. And you really do have to learn where you're going. So, I'll stop there. There is tons more. I've barely scratched the surface. Loads and loads more tracks, tons of real world race circuits, cities and the original circuits that we come to know and love on Gran Turismo up to this point. And it... God, what do I think of it then? 
Um, I have rekindled enthusiasm. Up until just now, really, the thing that I most remembered when thinking about this game was that annoying front end. It is annoying. It's, it's, it's just a mess. Things scattered about all over the place. You can't find what you want. But once you get past that, there is so much on here. So many circuits. So many fantastic circuits. And so many cars to prat about with. Um, I feel that this is bigger than Gran Turismo 6. I feel it's probably better. I think the I, I haven't played enough recently to, to come to a judgment about the diff, the balance, the difficulty, where I'm fairly convinced on six it is off. This, well, I remember playing it back in the day and not feeling like it was off. On five it wasn't off, so I think on here it should be right. And so, yeah, Gran Turismo 3, A-Spec, is the one I am most familiar with. But if you ask me which is my favourite, or which do I think is the best, I did say, my, my Desert Island game, this would be one of them. This possibly, yeah, top one, because there's so much of it. It may not be the one I'm most familiar with, but by God, it's the one with the most that's worth really getting to grips with. Um, can you feel my enthusiasm? I need to play more of this. I haven't played nearly enough in recent years because clearly it's bloody brilliant. I'm going to shut up before I like explode with <laughs> excitement and words. That kind of just quite an image, doesn't it? Okay, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider clicking the thumbs up button. I upload videos daily, so go ahead and hit subscribe if you'd like to see more. To all those who've already subscribed, I'd just like to say a great big thank you.